So we're going to do a little puja, but before we do the puja, just a few words about puja. So it's a real joy that you could all join me tonight. Thank you so much, Emily G, for letting the people in. I was a little preoccupied, but thank you. So um, we thus far in our series, so we've been talking about puja. It's the third installment now in our series on introduction to puja. So we did do some miscellaneous lectures on puja here and there. And we talked, oh yes, Rory, where's Rory? There we go, our co-host, yes, thank you so much. All right, there we go. Just so, while I'm doing the puja, so that Rory, if you can let people in, that'd be really great. Otherwise, people will be in the waiting, waiting room and they get quite angry. No. <laughs> but anyway, so this is our third installment now in our discussion on puja. And like I said, we did a few miscellaneous lectures on puja here and there. But this is, I think, our first kind of concerted effort at unpacking puja from the ground up. So starting with the very basics, like what exactly is puja? What is it? What is its role in spiritual life? Why take it up? Why practice it? All of that. So our hope in this series is not just to answer the how of puja, but more than that, the what and the why. Because arguably the how, it, it will never be an appealing how without the what and the why. You know, a lot of people know the how down pat, but they don't know the what. They learn puja because it's culturally relevant for them to learn puja. Maybe they're a Brahmin in a long-standing family of pujari, so they learn it. And then they get paid to perform pujas in people's houses and at temples and whatsoever. But they might not actually know the what of the puja, what exactly it is that they're doing. And some people, they know the what, perhaps, and they know the how, but they might not know the why. Many people do puja, but not in the context of spiritual sadhana. That's a redundant statement, spiritual sadhana, but not in the context of like practice. You know, they're doing puja, um, maybe because they feel like it's their obligation to. For a lot of people, puja just maybe amounts to religion, you know, and not yet in its deeper dimensions as an earnest desire for transformation. I know now that nowadays there's a distinction between religion and spirituality, but I think, you know, what's really being distinguished here is exoteric cultural practice from esoteric inner work. You know, so puja can be both things. Although in the how, we employ a various battery of techniques that are incredibly esoteric, especially in the tantric, I mean, all puja is tantric, but in the highly, highly tantricized form that we have it now, uh, the mudras, the mantras, all of these are so, so esoteric. Yet, if it's not practiced with intention and understanding, it can be just as exoteric as the most exoteric of religious um, functions, you know? So that's why this lecture series is it's mostly about the why and the how. I'm sorry, the why and the what, but through the means of the how. Okay, so just to recap, thus far, we started with a discussion of um, how to choose an image. That's the first thing that we kind of did. We said, all right, now we're interested in doing puja. We're interested in picking up the practice of tantric sadhana. So the first thing we have to do is pick up an image to be worshipped whether it's a picture or maybe it's a bronze or whatever other material type of image, or, or maybe it's like an abstract image, like a Shiva Lingam or something like that. But some image needs to be selected, some focus for the worship. And then we have to build an altar to house that image. So we had a bit of a discussion as to why none of this is idol worship for a variety of reasons. And central to all of these is the, the consideration of prana pratishta, where the image is itself not actually powerful without first putting the prana pratishta in there. You know, meaning without first investing that image with the divinity that dwells within. So one must evoke, ultimately. One must externalize one's inner spiritual self into an external substrate, as it's called, to practice this devotional dualistic form of puja. So we talked about how to select the murti, how to select the ishta, you know, which, which divinity that I should, you know, want to have a relationship with. All of that was covered in a previous class. And also just to, to a large extent in that lecture called Five Ways to Choose Your Ishta, Your Chosen Ideal. So you can, of course, consult that lecture for how to decide who to worship. Okay, that's the first thing that we talked about. Then after that, we talked a little bit about puja as a bhakti practice, how it's a very big component of bhakti yoga. And just before you know, we started having this discussion, we were playing some kirtan, some bhajans we were chanting. And the beautiful thing about bhajan is unlike most music, you're not singing for other people, you're singing for God. You know, and God is your very own self. So there can be no self-consciousness or rather there can be supreme self-consciousness because all the time while you're doing puja, you're only conscious of the self, that indwelling essence, which is divinity. So kirtan, singing devotional songs, chanting the name of the Lord, dancing and coming together and celebrating God is a big part of bhakti practice. In fact, you know, the Sanskrit root of bhakti, bhaj actually means to participate. So bhakti, 
is not just to be devoted, it's not just to love. I mean, in its deeper connotation, bhakti is in one sense to direct the entirety of your being and all your vitality towards some higher ideal. But it also means to come together and do that, you know, to do it with others. I mean, in a deeper sense, it means to participate in that love, which is a shared communion between you and the divine. So both of you are participating in each other. The devotee is drawn to the Lord like a bee to the lotus, but then the inverse happens. The Lord, like a bee, is drawn to the flower of the devotee in the full bloom of her love. You know, so they're, they're both kind of playing off of each other. The devotee loves God, but God loves the devotee arguably even more. You know, so they're participating in each other in one communion, so to speak. Now, singing is a big part of that. Kirtana, singing and repeating the name of God. So just saying the name, just Lord Jesus Christ or, you know, Alhamdulillah, or whatever the name might be, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, you know, Om Namah Shivaya, Jai Ma Kali, Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma, just repeating the name, it takes on this kind of nectarian quality. The, the, the monks at the Kali Mandir, the Jai Ma is always there on their lips. Every moment, after every sentence, it's punctuated with Jai Ma. So on your way out, They'll say, Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma. When you're coming in, they'll say, Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma. You give them something to offer to mother, they say, Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma. There's always there's a Jai Ma coming. And there's something sweet and nectarian about it, even from a distance. And the name is very important. So if you can somehow combine the name with the joy of singing, so much the better. If you can sing the name, so much the better. And, and it's kind of, for most of us, you know, it's, 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 we can feel a bit shy about this sort of thing. Like singing the names of God, you know, it can even if you're in a setting where there are other people singing it, I think that's even worse. You're like, okay, I don't want to sing. <laughs> Especially since I myself am not a very strong singer, I can't quite hold a melody. So some amongst us, maybe without a lot of singing experience, or maybe who from a young age haven't been validated in that way as singers, we might feel a bit intimidated actually about singing. We might say, that's just, that's just not who I am, you know, I'm not a singer. Okay, whatever. Since when was uh, spiritual practice about pandering to your comfort levels? Like, since when was anything in spiritual life about being comfortable <laughs> and feeling safe? It's always about going out of your comfort zone. It's always about feeling unsafe. Look, if bhakti came naturally to you, it wouldn't be a practice. <laughs> If it was easy to chant the name of the Lord all day, it wouldn't be a practice. <laughs> Jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, karma yoga. These things are difficult naturally because they efface the ego. So what makes it a practice is that it's fucking difficult to do, right? Especially for those who are shy about it. So do it. Um, and Swami Ashokananda says so beautifully, um, if you are shy about it, just lock your door. <laughs> Make sure no one is around and you just sing to your, your murti. You know, so thus far, I think the kind of theme in our puja series is no worries. Anything goes. It's what's important is the feeling, is the bhakti, that kind of communion with the divine that you're attempting to establish through this kind of ritualistic practice. So the first class then was about single item worship, just offering some incense. And maybe if not incense, some flowers. And if not flowers, just a simple bow or some kind of acknowledgement of that divinity in your home. Now, maybe short of any of that, you could just sing, you know, just grab a guitar or harmonium or forget any of that. My grandfather, who to me is the most exalted bhakta I've ever met in my life so far, barring Sri Ramakrishna, like when I read the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna and I think about my grandfather, I get these chills because he too all night would be up. You know, I would come down for like, you know, I'd be playing games on my computer or something. I'd be up all night too, but for different reasons, for bhoga. But he was up for yoga and I would come downstairs to the living room and he would just be there and he's always there all night, just singing songs to God in a quiet kind of hushed whisper. So one day I sat with him and I'm like, so how do you go about composing these songs? Because sometimes he'll sing songs from Tamil masters, you know, other times he'll just sing whatever. And he said, it's like this. And he started wrapping his knuckles on the table and he said, now just sing whatever, you know? And I thought, wow, all my grandfather needs to compose music to God is his knuckles on the dining room table doesn't need harmoniums or guitars or any of that. And whenever he sang in the temple, it was without any props. He just went up there shirtless with his white veshti or dhoti, as they call it in the North, with a microphone and just sang. And then he would grab me and push me and force me to do that. <laughs> no, he would never force, but kind of strongly encourage me to. But, you know, he just sang whatever without any instrument whatsoever. So that's powerful too. Just the other day, I'll just say this before we do a puja. Just the other day, I was at a Lakshmi puja at uh, dear sister's house. And we were doing the Lakshmi Puja and a friend had just started singing. Another sister of ours just started singing after the Puja, just whatever came to a heart. It was so beautiful, so pure. So anyway, that's an invitation. So instead of doing 
incense or flowers. You can just sing. No, yeah, Tata stories. Exactly. Oh, you just, you just sing, you know, sing to God. That's one thing. So that's what I wanted to stress that this puja is part of a bhakti practice. And if it's only that, good. Because what else do you need but bhakti? It's bhakti is its own reward. To love, love itself is itself higher than enlightenment. You can't want anything more than a life of devotion where all of your energies are directed towards something, the highest thing. So if, if puja is just a bhakti practice, cool. That's wonderful. And that's its ideal form, arguably. But as we said last week, it's also a lot more. It's a jnana practice as well. Puja is the act of translating philosophy into action. So as Swami Vivekananda said in his Karma Yoga, uh, ritual is philosophy in action. So all these principles that you learn in class, hey, be careful. If you just learn them in class, nothing will happen. If you read books, okay, I bought books, I read books. I listen to them in class. I'm sorry, nothing will happen. Very rarely will anything happen in spiritual life if all we're doing is engaging with ideas here. There must be some practice of translating ideas into action, into lived experience. Puja is that. Puja helps us symbolize a practice so that it goes deeper than just the conscious mind. It starts to make an impression in the prana, or I guess you could say the subtle body, or maybe even the subconscious mind. Let's be Jungian about it. You can really indelibly impress this stuff onto the subconscious mind. And that, I think, will flower into real actualized philosophy, not just intellectualized anal analysis. You know? So in a jnana sense, puja is very important too. Then thirdly, in the karma yoga sense, once you learn to do puja and, and everything in puja is an act of devotion, you get nothing back from it, arguably, except that exalted and ennobling feeling of having done some selfless service. You know, so that sets you up for karma yoga. Once you master puja and you get that taste, I mean, masters, once you are mastered by puja rather, and you get that taste for doing selfless work just for the heck of it, that sense of being ennobled just by serving, then it makes sense to go out into the world and do karma yoga. Then it's real. Then it's actually karma yoga, not just karma in the name of karma yoga. You know, then you're actually serving others as God. But puja is a good preparatory tool for that. And where it comes to raja yoga, my favorite elements in puja, arguably, are the meditative aspects, where there are, there are whole moments in puja where you're invited to just go within. You know, so when, like now, if I do a public puja here, we have 40 minutes, we're, we're going to gloss over those parts, right? They'll be like tokenistic at best. We'll say a mantra, especially in big public pujas where everyone is waiting for the prasad, it's kind of uncouth to like take your time in these parts of pujas. You just gotta say a mantra and go. But on your own, when you're practicing puja in the house, which is its ideal form, you can take your time. You can expand those meditative se sections. You know? So notice, those of you who like guided meditations, you don't need the apps anymore. The puja itself is a kind of directed, channelized guided meditation. If you find that meditation is difficult for you, if you just like sit there and try to meditate and the mind's all over the place, puja is actually a good... Um, uh, solution to that because it kind of draws you and lulls you into a deeper mode of being that meditation kind of naturally arises from that state you know so these are all reasons why one should learn puja now uh, let's transition so we talked about puja in this bhakti aspect which it, all that matters there is feeling is love is devotion so krishna and the bhagavad gita and this i think will be a, a refrain that we'll say over and over throughout this series krishna stresses in the bhagavad gita that even a leaf offered with the devotion is proper puja you know, like that. So you must have that attitude in the back of your mind always. Because if you don't have that attitude, you'll get caught up in what will follow in this series. You'll get lost in the sauce, so to speak. And you'll get intimidated. So many techniques. I have to do pour water on what finger now and what finger touches which eye. And you'll get kind of confused with all the different mantras, putting the mantras here, putting the mantras there. If you don't have this kind of vibe in the back of your mind, you know, like this feeling of like devotion and love is the main thing here then it can become a little hectic learning puja. You know? But if you just feel like devotion is enough, then there's a risk of overestimating your devotion. But how many of us can really love God? In fact, how many of us can, can love a person anyway? You know? So to really love is, is not something so easy, though it sounds easy. So of course, the next part is important too. So the two together, that will be a true sadhana. Remember, tantra is all about head and heart, combining all the faculties of your being. If you're just like, oh, I'm a bhakti person. You just sing, sing, sing. I'm sorry. You're not utilizing the whole prana, your whole vitality. You know, what's going to happen is if your emotions are directed towards God because you think you're a bhakta, but you don't analyze or study texts from the jnana point of view, rather you don't analyze the self. And if you don't do karma, if you don't do raja, what will happen is one part might be pure, the others will wreak, wreak havoc. 
<laughs> you know, and if you have the jnana down, you might know that you're Brahman, but emotions will drag you into the world and, you know, etc. So every part must be accounted for. Every faculty in, in what it means to be human must be directed towards the divine. So that being said, let's learn some technique, right? Technique is very important, right? Like learning the proper sequencing, the proper mantras, the proper mudras, all of that's really important. So now I think we're transitioning from having spoken about puja in a very general way. We're now going to go and specifically pick up part by part and do the puja, okay? So let me now just outline the puja and then do it for you. So I'll outline and do it. Now I'm going to do a very abbreviated puja and maybe close. Yeah, I think I can close with a bit of arati. Now arati is its own thing, right? It can be, it's, it's, it's a separate thing. Daily worship is a separate thing. Today, I'm just going to smush them together so you can see it and just kind of get a sense of what's happening in, in arati and et cetera. Okay, so the first thing you're going to see is the most important thing about puja is arguably the opening moment when you um, feel the living presence of the deity in the image graciously awaiting your service. You know, so ideally you take a shower. We just did that, took a nice shower, wear some clean, fresh clothes, you know, then you walk into your shrine and you look at the image, the murti, and you really feel like it's a living presence. It's not just bronze or an image. It's been invested with every day your love that it's woken up. It's a jagrat murti. Really feel that, that there's a living presence there in the murti. And it's your very own self reflected back to you. So you feel the grandeur of walking into your temple, into your shrine. Then you do a pranam. You make pranam to the deities. You say, hello, what's up? And then you sit. And now you maybe start by sprinkling everything with Ganga water. Splashing the flowers, splashing yourself, splashing the space with Ganga water. And, you know, you might clean the images as well. You might decorate the shrine a little bit. This is all up to you. And we'll have a whole class on this opening moment. But anyway, for now, just for time's sake, it's just the opening moment is to cleanse the space, offer some incense to the various deities, sit, pray, do japa for a little bit, meditate for a little bit. That's the first part of puja. So getting in the zone. The next thing then is called the... Um, Mangala shloka or the Mangala charana, which means the prayer of auspiciousness. That's when you offer the actions to the Lord and, and invite the remembrance of the Lord into the heart. So there's a mantra for that. We'll learn it in a different class. That's the first thing that happens. You know, Sarva Mangala Mangalyam. You know, you're saying, I invite auspiciousness. Then there's this purification practice. It's called Achamana where you sip water to cleanse the mouth and do a few mantras to cleanse the system. And you say a mantra for purity, purification, done. Then there's something called the Saman Argya Stapana. And don't worry, we'll go over this another time. This is the establishing of the communal offering water. You know, so you would put some water, but before that, you would create a yantra, which is a uh, kind of tantric diagram, which is a triangle inside a circle, inside a square. Again, we'll cover it another day. And then you worship that yantra. You worship all the shaktis that hold up the place. You worship adhara shakti, the holding power. Then you worship, um, after adhara shakti, you worship a kurma, the tortoise that upholds the universe or the world. You know, and that mythological kind of tale, there's a tortoise. Then you worship uh, ananta, the all-pervading Vishnu, who is the sustainer of the world. Then you worship a uh, Prithvi, Earth, Mother Earth, then Prakriti, the creatrix. Now, those of you who have been attending philosophy lectures, these terms are familiar. Like, oh, Prakriti is worship. That same Prakriti in Sankhya, which we talk about, is worship like that. Oh, Prithvi, oh, like, you, you know, Ananta, meaning all pervading. You see all these philosophical terms now get expression. So you worship that, worship that nicely. Then you put the vessel on top of it. So it's now Stapana means establishing or fixing. So you put it there. Then you pour the water into it. You invoke the rivers of India into the water. You make it holy water, essentially. Then you do a special arghya, a leaf with some rice and some grass and some flowers. You place that there. Basically, all this stuff. Yeah, good. Amal has got his kosha kushi. Good. You place all this stuff inside there. You make the water really sacred. Then you worship the gods of the door. You worship a series of gods to kind of set, settle into the space. Um, and then you dispel harmful spirits evil spirits, ghosts, goblins, obstacles to yoga, like that. So this is called, um, well, we'll talk about the names another time, but this is the vanquishing of the enemies, kind of like that, to yoga. Then after that, you establish the seat. Then after you establish the seat, you praise the guru. Then after you praise the guru, you purify the hands. Then after you purify the hands, you purify the flowers. <laughs> then after you purify the flowers, you purify the objects of worship. Then after you do that, you purify the space by doing 
fat, fat, fat like that. You purify, purify, purify. You create a ring of fire. So you purify each mantra. You do some pranayama. Okay, now we're getting lost in the sauce a bit, right? But I just want to give you a sense of like how each of these are discrete parts. And just like learning <clears throat> a piece of music, and Westerfer will know a lot about this. Musicians would, will know. You don't have to learn the whole thing at once, especially a long piece. If you look at it, you're like, oh my God, the sheet music. Flip, flip, flip. You're like, I'm never going to learn this stuff. It's so much, all these different 16th notes, syncopations here and then. You're like, ah, you know? And, and then your, your music teacher says, relax. You don't have to learn all 12 pages of this song today. You just have to learn the first two bars, first two measures. That's it. And you look at the first two measures, you're like, I can do that. I can learn the first two measures. So you learn them. Then more importantly, you learn them slowly. You see all these different 16th notes. You're like, oh my God, there's so many syncopations. And if you try to play it at tempo, it's going to be awful. So why don't you drop the tempo, half tempo, drop it even less than that. And you realize, oh, I'm learning it super slow. And then you get each note right. And then slowly you work up the muscle memory. If you learn it quickly, then you will never unlearn some of those mistakes that you learned. So I'm still stuck with some mistakes from before that I've just programmed into me from learning things too quickly. You know, so we better learn things slowly, take it nice and slow like that. Okay, so I'm going to go do it. I'm just going to go through a very abbreviated puja, leaving much of the puja out of it, but just give you kind of a taste for the segments, okay? So my, my invitation to you now is as you're watching the puja, and I'll, I'll translate the mantras where I can, which you mentioned Om is really good. <laughs> Actually, there, I know some pujaris will only do puja to the tanpura. There's always like a note, a droning note. And I've, I've wanted to experiment with that. But like I said, I'm not strong enough a singer to be able to do the mantras in key. So it just sounds dissonant and weird. But maybe one day this boy will get there. <laughs> but yeah, you can do it to a tanpura. You can do it to a drum. You can actually make it like an expression of song as it ought to be. Okay, so I'm going to do it. Now, here's, here's my invitation to you. As you watch the puja, my, it's kind of like homework for those. It's, you don't have to do it. Okay, it's an invitation. If you want to do it, you can do it. From the English translations of what you're going to hear, and maybe if you know some Sanskrit, or maybe if you just like want to follow it in terms of vibe, yeah, Tara likes this. So just maybe if you have a piece of paper and a pen or like a computer and a keyboard or something, try to track what's happening and see how many discrete sections you can discover from what you're about to see. Pretend like you are now structuring the puja. I'm just going to throw mantras at you, do a few things, and then you decide what part is what part. You sequence it for me. Okay, so you write down the list of what happened and give it your own names. You know, you can be like, this is the vanquishing of the demons or this is the establishing of the seat. This is the praising of the guru like that. Whatever you see, whatever you notice, just list it. Then send me that uh, document or something. Then we'll go over it together, maybe even in the puja thread. Right. And, and like this over the next week, what our homework over this week is to establish the outline of a simple daily worship. Then we're going to go in and fill up each thing. Okay. So that's, that's our goal. So shall we? All right. Let's do it. And Rory G, you are co-hosting. Yes. So if the fellas yeah, come yeah. in, you're at them. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. All right.
Hey, can you hear me? Is it audible over there? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. Good, and you can see the shrine, sort of? Maybe I'll bring you a little closer next week. Can you see the shrine? Yes. Okay. Om Sarva Mangala Mangalyam Varanyam Vardam Shubham Narayanam Namaskritya Sarva Karmani Karayet O Lord, Thou art the beauty in all things beautiful, the auspicious in all things auspicious. By remembering You only are actions to be performed, for all actions are made sacred and sanctified by Thy holy name. May thy will alone be done. Om Vishnu. Om Vishnu. Om Vishnu.
ओम तद्विष्णु परमं पदम सदा पश्यति सूरय दिवी व चक्षुरात Om, the sages who have come before me have, see, have seen with eyes as vast as the sky the inner truth. May I too see with the eyes of those sages. May I too attain to the truth. Om, ma pavitra pavitro va sarva avastam gatopi va yasmaret pundari kaksham sabaya vyantra shuchihi. Om, whether I may be pure or impure, whatever my condition may be internally or externally, I am made pure through and through by simply remembering the lotus eye lord who dwells within. ओम ह्रीं यते गंधपुष्पे धार शक्ताय नम ओम यते गंधपुष्पे कुर्माय नम ओम यते गंधपुष्पे अनताय नम ओम यते गंधपुष्पे पृथ्वी नम ओम यते गंधपुष्पे प्रकृत नम विस् फ्लवर्स आई वर्शिप ऑल द शक्ति दट होल्ड अप दिस् प्लेस Om Pat Om Namaha 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 ओम गंगे चमुने गोदावरी सरस्वती नर्मादे सिंधु कावेरी जलस्मिन सनिधिम कुरु विथ दी एलिफेंट गोड मुद्रा आई इनवाइट और डिमांड ऑल सेवन सेक्रेड रिवर्स ऑफ इंडिया टू बी प्रेजेंट इन दिस वेसल होम वांग ओम 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 मे दिस वाटर बी कंसील्ड मे दिस वाटर बी नेक्टराइज्ड May this water be spiritualized. Om Nitya Gandha Pushpe Dwara Devata Bhyo Namaha. With this fragrant flower, I worship the gods of the door. Om Nitya Gandha Pushpe Brahma Ne Namaha. With this fragrant flower, I worship Brahma, the Creator. Om Nitya Gandha Pushpe Vastu Purusha Ne Namaha. With this fragrant flower I worship the presiding deity of this house. Om pat 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 Om sarva vigyan sare hum pat swaha Om apasar pantu te bhuta ye bhuta bhu vi samchitaha ye bhuta vigna kartara se na santu shri vagnaya By the command of Shiva I demand that all ghosts earthbound spirits and other such obstacles to yoga be swiftly destroyed creep away creep away thou baneful things Om raksha raksha hum pat swaha 
May the floor be purified. Om Hringate Ganda Pushpe Adhara Shakti Adibhyo Namaha With this fragrant flower I worship all the Shaktis that hold up this seat. Om Asya Asuna Paveshana Mantrasya Meru Prishta Rishihi Sutalam Chandaha Kurmo Devata Asuna Paveshane Viniyogaha Om, this is the mantra for the consecrating of the seat. The rishi who wrote it is the Mount Meru. The meter in which it is composed is Sutala. The deity to which it is ascribed is Kurma, the tortoise that upholds the earth. Om, this is the mantra for establishing the seat. Om Prithivitvaya Dritta Loka Devitvam Vishnu Nadrita Tvam Chadhareyam Amityam Pavitram Kuruchasanam Om Hring Ette Ganda Pushpe Adhar Shaktaye Kamalasanaya Namaha Om Salutations Mother Earth, Lord Vishnu holds you. Please hold me too as I perform this worship. May the seat be thus purified. With this fragrant flower, I worship the Shakti that holds up this lotus seat. Ayin Guru Bhyo Namaha Ayin Parama Guru Bhyo Namaha Ayin Para Para Guru Bhyo Namaha Ayin Parameshti Guru Bhyo Namaha Gangane Shaya Namaha Om Kreen Mahakala Bhairava Sahita Shemat Takshina Kalika Devataya Namaha Om Salutations to my Guru Salutations to my Guru's Guru Salutations to my lineage of Gurus, unbroken. Salutations to God, who is the Guru. Salutations to Ganesh, Lord of Learning. Salutations to Mother Kali. Om Shaung Ang Hung Pat Swaha Kling Aing Pat Ong Shat Abhisheka Hung Pat Swaha Ong Shat Abhisheka Hung Pat Swaha Ong Shat Abhisheka Hung Pat Swaha Om Pushpe Pushpe Maha Pushpe Su Pushpe Pushpa Sambhave Pushpa Chaya Vakirane Cha Ong Pat Swaha O flowers, flowers, blessed flowers, piles of flowers, flower buds strewn all over the place. With the water of a hundred purifying baths, I protect, purify, and spiritualize these flowers. Om Kring Pat Om Kring Pat Om Kring Pat Vang May all the tools and implements of worship be thus purified to hold the subtlest of spiritual vibrations. May all these tools be nectarized for the comings of these vibrations. Pat, pat, pat. Pat, pat, pat. Astray, pat. May all the three worlds be purified. May the ground be purified. Om Ankring Ang Kang Kring Kang Chang Kring Chang Tang Kring Tang Tang Kring Tang Pang Kring Pang Yang Kring Yang Shang Kring Shang May all the sets of the Sanskrit alphabet be purified with the Bij Mantra Kring Rang May the space around me be protected by a circle of fire May all baneful influences be kept away Ang Hung Pat Swaha Ang Hung Pat Swaha Ang Hung Pat Swaha May my body be protected. Om Durge Durge Rakshini Hung Pat Swaha May Durga protect us against all baneful influences. May the space be made sacred, pure and sanctified.
ओम भूत श्रृंगात चिराह सुषुम्ना पतेना जीव शिव परमाशिव पाद योजयामी स्वाहा ओम सिंस ओनली गॉड कैन वर्शिप गॉड एंड सिंस आई एम इमेस्ड इन द एलिमेंट्स आई इनवाइट लॉर्ड शिव टू बिगिन हिज असेंट अप द सुषुम्ना नादी सो दैट दिस इंडिविजुअल मे बिकम द ट्रांसपर्सनल सेल्फ मे गॉड वर्शिप गॉड थ्रू गॉड ओम यंग लिंग शरीर शोष शोष स्वाहा ओम रंग संकुच शरीर दाह दाह स्वाहा ओ एयर ड्राइ अप ऑल द इम्प्यूरिटीज विद इन मी ओ फायर बर्न अप दिस ड्राइड अप हस मे आई बी मेड प्योर ओम परमाशिवा सुषुम्ना पतेना मूला श्रृंगत्ता उलस्सोलस्स ज्वल्ला ज्वल्ला प्रज्वल्ला प्रज्वल्ला सोहं हं स स्वाहा O oh Lord Shiva from the root up to the crown climb up climb up light up light up illumine illumine i am he he is i swaha Om ang hring krong yang rang lang wang shang shang sang hang hang sha shimat takshana kalaka devataya pranaha pranaha Om ang hring krong yang rang lang wang shang shang sang hang hang sha shimat takshana kalaka devataya jiva ihastitaha Om in this purified and renewed body may the energy and being of mother kali be established पुष्पे श्री गुरवे नम ओं गुर ब्रह्म गुर विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरवे नम अखंद मंदलाकार व्याप्तम ये नाचराचर तत्पद दर्शित ये नस्मे श्री गुरवे नम विथ दिस फ्रेगरेंट फ्लावर आई वर्शिप मै गुरु द गुरु इज ब्रह्म द गुरु इज विष्णु द गुरु इज द ग्रेट गॉड लॉर्ड शिव हिमसेल्फ the guru is verily consciousness bliss made manifest the guru who applying the collerium stick of knowledge is the one who reveals to us that indivisible infinite i worship at the feet of this guru again and again i bow to the guru गंधपुष्पे गणेशाय नम ओं वक्रतुंद महाकाय कोति सूर्य सभ निर्विघ्नियांकुर मे देव सर्वकु सर्वदा ओं गणनाथवा गणपति गंग हवा महे कवि कविन मुपम श्रावस्ताम ज्येष्ठराज भ्रमना भ्रमणास्पत आना श्रृण्वा नूति सीध साधन Om with this fragrant flower I worship Ganesh twisted of trunk and large of body resplendent like the light of a million suns beloved of all the gods remover of obstacles o great patron of learning o lord of all knowers of brahman o king of kings of unspeakable grandeur we invoke thee with thy sacred yajur hymn we invoke thee with great offerings please take up thy seat amidst our assembly om gang ganeshaya namaha 
With this fragrant flower, I worship all the gods. With this fragrant flower, I worship all the goddesses of all the pantheons. Om Megang Kim Vigatam Param Shava Shiva Rudham Trinitram Param Trinitram Param Karnalam Badri Munda Yugma Bhayadam Munda Srajam Bishanam Vama Durdvakaram Pujam Narashira Kadagam Chusavitari Dana Bhiti Vimukta Keshani Chayam Vande Sada Kalikam I meditate unceasingly upon Mother Kali. I visualize her with all of her imagery and attributes. I offer the lotus seat of my heart as an asana, as a seat for her to sit upon. With the nectar dripping down from the thousand petal lotus above the crown of the head, I wash the feet of this most auspicious Kali and I give her a bath. For clothing, I offer her the principle of infinite space, symbolized by a bright red Varanasi sari. I anoint her feet with the sandalwood paste of my devotion. I place at her feet various flowers, the Vishesha Arghya, symbolizing my purified intellect. I wave before her the incense of my vital energies. May they be redirected in its entirety, in their entirety towards her. I wave before her the burning ghee lamp of my spiritual fervor, all the while ringing the bell of the Om that resounds unceasingly within. I place before her fruit, sweets, and other delicacies made of the ocean of immortality. For an umbrella, I offer her the thousand-petal lotus above the crown of the head. And for fanning, I wave before her the yak-tailed whisk of the principle of wind. For song, I offer all the sounds in the world. For temple dance, I offer the whirling of my mind and senses, stringing together all my chakras using the shushumna nadi as a string. I place the mala of my being around the neck of Mother Kali, and at her feet I place three flowers, symbolizing the three virtues I should like to possess. Jnana, knowledge, bhakti, devotion, and vairagya, true renunciation. Om Hreem Kreem Shrimat Kalika Ye Dev Ye Namaha Eha Gacha Eha Gacha Eha Tishta Eha Tishta Eha Sani Dehi Eha Sani Dehi Eha Sani Rudhyasva Eha Sani Rudhyasva Eha Samukhi Bhava Eha Samukhi Bhava Om Kreem Kalika Vidmahe Smashana Vasinye Dimahi Tanno Kore Prachodayat Om O Divine Mother Kali, I invoke thee into my heart. I merge thee into thy bead mantra cream. I blow upon this flower to invite you into the flower. And I place the flower at the feet of this image to invite you to sit and stay in the image so that you may be worshipped. Om Hreem Kreem Esha Gandha Shrimat Kalika Ye Dev Ye Namaha O Divine Goddess Kali, I worship you with the fragrance of the earth. Om Hreem Kreem Ete Gandha Pushpe Idam Sachandana Pushpam Shrimat Kalika Ye Dev Ye Namaha O Divine Goddess Kali, I worship you with this flower smeared with the sandalwood paste of my devotion. Oh, 
ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ಕಾಲಿಕಾ ದೇವೇ ನಮ ಓಂ ಕ್ಲೀಂ ಕಾಲಿಕೇ ವಿಮಹೆ ಸ್ಮಶಾನವಾಸಿ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ಘೋರೇ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಓಂ ಕ್ಲೀಂ ಕಾಲಿಕೇ ವಿಮಹೆ ಸ್ಮಶಾನವಾಸಿ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ಘೋರೇ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಓಂ ಕ್ಲೀಂ ಕಾಲಿಕೇ ವಿಮಹೆ ಸ್ಮಶಾನವಾಸಿ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ಘೋರೇ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಹ್ರೀಂ ಕ್ರೀಂ ಏಷ ದೀಪಾಶ್ರಮತ್ಕಾಲಿಕಾ ದೇವೇ ನಮಃ ಕ್ರೀಂ ಕಾಲಿಕೇ ವಿಮಹೆ ಸ್ಮಶಾನವಾಸಿ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ಘೋರೇ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಓಂ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಸೋಪಕರ್ಣ ನೈವೇದ್ಯಾ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಎತ್ತೆ ಗಂಧ ಪುಷ್ಪೆ ಸೋಪಕರ್ಣ ನೈವೇದ್ಯಾ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಎತ್ತೆ ಗಂಧ ಪುಷ್ಪೆ ಏತತ್ ಅಧಿಪತ್ತೇ ದೇವಾಯ ವಿಷ್ಣವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಎತ್ತೆ ಗಂಧ ಪುಷ್ಪೆ ಏತತ್ ಸಂಪ್ರದಿನೇ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಕಾಲಕಾಯ ದೇವ್ಯೇ ನಮಃ ಹೋಂ ವಾಂ ಕ್ರೀಂ ಗ್ರೀಂ 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 ಓಂ ಹ್ರೀಂ ಕ್ರೀಂ ಇದಂ ಸೋಪಕರ್ಣ ನೈವೇದ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಕಾಲಕಾಯ ದೇವ್ಯೇ ನಿವೇದಯ ಹೋಂ ವಾಂ ಕ್ರೀಂ ಗ್ರೀಂ 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 ಓಂ ಹ್ರೀಂ ಕ್ರೀಂ ಇದಂ ಪನಾತ್ ಸಾ ಚಂದ್ರ ಉದಕ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಕಾಲಕಾಯ ದೇವ್ಯೇ ನಮಃ ಓ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗೋಡಸ್ ಕಾಲಿ ದೋ ಯು ಆರ್ ನೋ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅರ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಇನ್ ಅರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಯೆಟ್ ವಿ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ ಯು ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆನರ್ಡ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಆಂಕ್ರೋ ಮಹಾಕಾಲ ಭೈರವ ಸರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ನಾಶಯ ನಾಶಯ ಓಂ ಹ್ರೀಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಹುಂ ಪತ್ ಸ್ವಾಹ ಓಂ ಎತ್ತೆ ಗಂಧ ಪುಷ್ಪೆ ಎತಿ ಗಂಧ ಪುಷ್ಪಾ ಮಹಾಕಾಲ ಭೈರವಾಯ ಶಿವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓ ಲೋಡ್ ಶಿವ ಇನ್ ದೈ ಥೆರಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಎಸ್ ರುದ್ರ ಕಮ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಪ್ಸ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯೋಗ ಓಂ ವಿ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಯು ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫ್ರೇಗ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ with these fragrant flowers om namah shivaya om triyambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarukam iva bandhanan mrityor mukshi yamamritat om om triyambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarukam iva bandhanan mrityor mukshi yamamritat om ಓಂ ರಾತ್ರಿಕ ದೀಪಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ರಾತ್ರಿಕ ದೀಪಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ರಾತ್ರಿಕ ದೀಪಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಕಾಳಿ ಮಹಾಕಾಳಿ ಕಾಳಿ ಕೇ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಸರ್ವಾನಂದ ಕರೆ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಓಂ ಕಾಳಿ ಮಹಾಕಾಳಿ ಕಾಳಿ ಕೇ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಸರ್ವಾನಂದ ಕರೆದಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಓಂ ಕಾಳಿ ಮಹಾಕಾಳಿ ಕಾಳಿ ಕೇ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಸರ್ವಾನಂದ ಕರೆದಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಓಂ ಕಾಳಿ ಮಹಾಕಾಳಿ ಕಾಳಿ ಕೇ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಸರ್ವಾನಂದ ಕರೆದಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಓಂ ಕಾಳಿ ಮಹಾಕಾಳಿ ಕಾಳಿ ಕೇ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಸರ್ವಾನಂದ ಕರೆದಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಓಂ ಕಾಳಿ ಮಹಾಕಾಳಿ ಕಾಳಿ ಕೇ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಸರ್ವಾನಂದ ಕರೆ ದೇವಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು 
ओम काली महाकाली काली के परमेश्वरी सर्वानंद करे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तुते ओम काली महाकाली काली के परमेश्वरी सर्वानंद करे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तुते ओम काली महाकाली काली के परमेश्वरी सर्वानंद करे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तुते ओम काली महाकाली काली के परमेश्वरी सर्वानंद करे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तुते ओम काली महाकाली काली के परमेश्वरी सर्वानंद करे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तुते ओम काली महाकाली काली के परमेश्वरी सर्वानंद करे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तुते ओम काली महाकाली काली के परमेश्वरी सर्वानंद करे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तुते ओम काली महाकाली काली के परमेश्वरी सर्वानंद करे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तुते जय महामाई की जय
Mother, we are wholly ignorant of the proper ways to worship you. We are wholly innocent of the injunctions and the techniques. We are wholly innocent of the mantras or how to pronounce them correctly. Yet, being offered with devotion, please accept this ritual worship as complete. O oh, Mother, may we have no goal in sight with all of our actions, with all of our thoughts, and with all of our speech but Thee. May all these be consigned to the fires of Brahman. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti